back to the Michael K. Show. Don LaGreca with you till 7 o'clock. Michael will join us at 3 o'clock live from Yankee Stadium. Steve Phillips will join us. SB40 coming up at 240. Right now we have Nick Mangold in studio center of the New York Jets. How are you, sir? Good. How you doing? You look a lot more comfortable than when you first came into the league. I remember you did a weekly for us a couple of years ago, and you were great. But just now, just getting to talk to you over the last couple of minutes, you just seem more like a New Yorker. You seem comfortable. Are you <laughs> sensing that things are just uh, a little bit better than they were when you first came into the league? I, I'm getting much more used to uh, the idea of New York, A. Uh, I think that was a big one. But then B, the NFL. Uh, as a rookie, you know, you're going through and, and things are pretty crazy. And your first two years uh, are, are quite difficult. And, and now I think I've gotten comfortable. I've gotten I, I enjoy city driving, uh, as I, okay. it, I, which seems crazy, but I enjoy it. And I'm really starting to come into my own here in the city and in the area. And you were telling me off the air you were in a unique place when you found out about the Jets acquiring Mark Sanchez. Yeah, I was down in uh, Antigua, uh, down in the Caribbean. And, I mean, who who goes away on, on draft weekend except for, you know, the biggest idiots like myself. And uh had to find out through the internet because the phone didn't work. And right. um, it, it was very it was a very interesting way to, f- to find out. So once you found out, what did you think? You know, I was excited, you know, especially seeing the way that it happened, um, you know, as a fan looking at it, you know, the interesting way to go through the draft. Um, but, you know, I'm excited to get him in there. Uh, hopefully I'll, I'll get to meet him tomorrow. I haven't met him yet. Um, but he, he seems he, he says all the right things and he, he looks pretty good. So, you know, it, it should be uh, hopefully a good thing for us. Do you feel for Kellen Clemens at all? Because this is the second consecutive year now where. He thought he had a real chance to be the starter. Last year was Brett Favre coming in. Now it's the number five pick overall, Mark Sanchez. So do you feel for Kel- Clemens at all? Oh, definitely. You know, I, Kellen, and, and I, a testament to him, he, he does everything right. And, you know, when he got his chance there uh, two years ago and, uh, and behind a horrible offensive line, which I was a part of, we gave him no help. And I, I don't think that helped him anyway. Um, and then having to go through Brett coming in and, and now, you know, drafting a quarterback – you know, you, you got to feel for the guy. Talking to Nick Mangold, center of the Jets here on 1050 ESPN New York. Do you think he can be healthy competition for Mark Sanchez? Do you think he might still be the starting quarterback for the Jets in 2009? Oh, definitely. I, I, Kellen does a great job of learning, and, and he doesn't do learning by looking at the book. He does it by, uh, well, looking at the book, but also talking to the offensive line. He'll, he'll call me up, you know, 9 o'clock at night, like, hey, what do we do on this protection when this happens? And, and I think that is a great way of learning – by knowing what your offensive line is going to do as well as what you're doing. And, you know, I think that gives, that'll give him an edge as we go into many camps and OTAs because he, he has that knowledge. He's been in Chadi's system. So it, it should be a pretty good battle. Now, we talk all the time about what happened last year with Joe Flacco in Baltimore and Matt Ryan in Atlanta and the fact that they were rookie quarterbacks who came in and they brought their teams to the playoffs. But, you know, Atlanta had the controversy with Vic and not much was expected. Baltimore had won five games the year before. The difference with you, you guys were nine and seven, and let's face it, going into after the Tennessee game, you probably felt you were the best team in the AFC and not all of football. So I'm sure the expectations are high in 2009, no matter who your quarterback was going to be. So, do you think Mark Sanchez, in the limited amount of information you have, can jump into a team expected to win and help you win? Well, you know, I'll be interested to find out what the rest of once we get started. Uh, but I think I would put a confidence level from the front office on the offensive line uh, if they want to go with a rookie quarterback they have confidence in us that we're going to get the job done up front running the ball, which which I believe is a Rex philosophy, and then keeping them upright and, and letting them have a clear read of, of what's going on. So I took it as a, a boat of confidence for us um, from the front office. How good is this offensive line right now? Well, I, I like to believe it's one of the best, if not the best. You know, we, we have up and down the line, um, starting from our coach, and, and Coach Callahan is fantastic. you got Brick, who's really coming into his own level. Allen, who uh, obviously, you know, his accolades speak for what he's done. Brandon Moore, I think, is the most underrated guard in, in football, and I'll, I'll put that out there against anybody. And then Damian Woody's done a great mm-hmm. job for us over there at right tackle. So I, I think that amongst the, the front five, we have a fantastic group. You brought up Rex Ryan. What do you think of him? I think he's fantastic. We, uh, we had a mini camp two weeks ago, I believe, and uh, it, it was just it was great to see his passion, the way that he, uh, the way that he runs things with a you know, get on, get off, you know, get it done right uh, mentality. And, and, you know, he he, he brought up, um, I think it was the second practice or the third practice. We have like five of them. He brought up, you know, I, I think practice was great. You guys were running around. You guys were, uh, you know, making all the right decisions. But I don't think you were having enough fun. 
So next practice, I want you to make sure you come out and have fun. And as a player and, and as a guy who loves having fun, I, I think that was a huge, huge step in, in our progress of, of welcoming him in as a, a head coach. What are some of the differences you'd noticed so far between him and Eric Mangine? Uh, you know, I, I think th- they're both very passionate about what they do. I, I think, um, you know, Rex is a little bit more animated. And, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to go through because, you know, Eric and I came in together. Uh, essentially, you know, he drafted me and, and um, you know, it, it's all I ever knew. So it'll be interesting to see as we move forward the the differences that that come about or the similarities that come about as we go through these, this offseason. Have you been able to put a finger on during the course of the offseason what happened last year? No, you know, I, I and, and you brought it up when after we beat Tennessee, you know, we were riding high. Um, and going from where we were to where we ended up was just – was disastrous, and it, you kind of want to forget about it, but there's always that little little ball that's still in you that says you can't forget about it because you need to work this much harder to make sure that doesn't happen again. And, you know, I, I'm not sure. I don't have a pinpoint idea of what went wrong, um, but I know we didn't run the ball very well towards the end there, and, and that's something that we hung our hat on from the beginning, and uh, we got to continue with that. Talking to Eric Mangold, uh, Nick Mangold, excuse me, center for the New York Jets here on 1050 ESPN New York, the Michael K. Show. Michael will join us at 3 o'clock live from Yankee Stadium. Nick, how would you evaluate the uh, season with Brett Favre? Do you think it was a positive season? Was it a good season, even though you didn't make the playoffs? You know, I, I think even even though we didn't make the playoffs and, and we had such a fall at the end, I, th- I still think it was a good season. I, I think having Brett come in, uh, for me personally, really taught me about the love of the game. You know, to be able to do it as long as he's done it, there's got to be that little something, and that's his love of the game, which, I, you know, sometimes I don't think it's shown through uh, from him. But w- when you see that guy going out there at, at 39 and, and doing what, you know, guys 10 years younger than him couldn't do, it, there was that love that was going in, and that really uh, was instilled in me, you know, to, to really get the idea of the game. And, you know, I, I think even though it did, uh, we didn't make the playoffs, I, I still think, um, it was a lot better than four and twelve. Was he a good teammate? Oh yeah, I, I, I to me he was, and I don't know if it's center quarterback relationship or you know if I just had blinders on because it was Brett mm-hmm. Favre, you know the the god of quarterbacking that I grew up with. Right. Um, but you know he, I, I never expected uh, him to come over. You know if I was having dinner at the house, I would never, I wouldn't expect him to come over. I mean he was thirty nine, I was twenty four. Um, you know that that age difference to me, didn't translate with him just hanging out with us, uh, you know, with a wife and kids and everything. So I never really expected anything big out of him. Uh, but whenever we were around, you know, we had a good relationship, good working relationship. Was there a moment for you as a kid that looked up to Brett Favre and say, I'm in a huddle with Brett Favre. Brett Favre's my quarterback. I'm hiking the ball to a guy that's going to the Hall of Fame. There were a couple of them. You know, we uh, when we first met in Cleveland, when uh, right after he signed uh, – or we traded for him, and he shows up, and you know you're just like you know Brett Favre's walking through the locker room. This is crazy. <laughs> and then then the next, I think we had a day off, and the next day we're at practice, and Brett Favre's standing in the huddle, and like someone's got to pinch me. You know, thinking this is this is a little odd here. So it, it it definitely there was a couple of moments. Give us an example if you can of like something he would say in a tight moment in a tight game in that huddle where you said, you know what, I can really tell that he's been around for a long time. Was there ever a moment like that? Um, you know, I don't think it was anything he ever said. It was just the way that he carried himself. Um, I, he wasn't a, a huge talker, mm-hmm. uh, but he had that look in his eye. And you could just you could tell by just looking at him that, hey, you know, he's going to get the job done if we give him the opportunity to. And I, I think he, that's a, a great confidence he got from, you know, playing uh, a billion years in the league. What's the biggest area you think you've improved on in the few years you've been in the NFL? Um, I, I don't know. I, I I think definitely pass blocking. We did a lot of run blocking in, at Ohio State, and we ran the ball like crazy. Uh, and, and having a block in space, you know, a lot of times in college you, you get a lot of double teams, and you get to the NFL, and you know everyone kind of needs to go get somebody on their own, and uh, that's a big thing transition wise that you know you you kind of have to get. Um, get going because you know you got to go against i got to go against vince uh, mm-hmm. one-on-one all the time and it's just in college you really don't have that now if i had a running back or a quarterback or, or even a, a linebacker in this room right now 
I'd be able to understand the best moment he had during the season because I probably saw it on television. It's difficult for a fan watching an offensive line to be able to determine other than the fact that he just protected the quarterback, the great moment. Was there one moment or one play or one thing that happened during last year that, that you remember more than anything else? Um, there were a couple of blocks that stand out in my head. Uh, when we played Denver, uh, and they were all running plays, and it just got a, a fantastic, perfect hand place and perfect lift, and it just it, it worked out well into a pancake. And it, those there was a couple of them that you know keep replaying in my mind every time I think about going back to the facility and and getting started again because it is makes it exciting and, and that's where the love comes from. Now, when that game ends, do you look forward to the film session? The next day, knowing that I'm going to get the chance to see that again, um, you do and you don't because there's probably five other plays. You know, for that one good play, there's five <laughs> other plays that you may have gotten the job done, but you look horrible doing it. Um, so you, you, it's it's bittersweet. So it's not like Coach Callahan saying, "See everybody, that's the way you're supposed to do it." It's more like Nick, why didn't you do that the other times? <laughs> exactly. You know, <laughs> you, you did it here. Why can't you do it again? You know, and so it. But it, it's a good motivational tool to have something like that come around. Now, the Jets have a taste of the NFL, which is something that's going to be coming up Tuesday, May 8th. Tell us mm-hmm. about that. Oh, it's, fa- it's a fantastic event. May 5th, excuse me. May 5th. Uh, it's a fantastic event where we have a whole bunch of Jets players, or 20 to 30 Jets players, come out to uh, Cipriani's on Wall Street. And we have uh, chefs from all, all around uh, New York and uh, a couple from New Jersey. They come out, they cook one signature j- dish. You get to go. You, you talk, mingle with the Jets players. You get to eat, drink, and uh, you get there's. A, they've got some pretty good auction items up for bid. So it, it's a beautiful event. and It all goes to A uh, and P and the Jets Foundation uh, for tackling hunger in our tri-state area around here. Well, give you an indication how good it could be. Uh, the couple of Super Bowls I went to, everybody says that the highlight of the Super Bowl is the taste of the NFL party the day before the Super Bowl. So I'm imagining that the Jet one is probably even that much better. So it's going to be happening at Cipriani's Wall Street, as you said, Tuesday, May 5th. Now, Mm -hmm. we've got two unique ways of giving it away. You can actually Twitter Nick to can, win? Yeah. Uh, I've been dabbling in the Twitter at twitter.com slash Nick Mangold, all one word. And uh, so we're we're going to give away two VIP ticket packages um, for the Twitter. The first person that comes out, and, and I guess it's called Tweet. I'm not really sure. I think it is. I I'm think not sure. I, we'll, we'll have to check in the Webster's for that one. But <laughs> um, the first person that tweets me uh, the taste of the NFL, I will um, I'll be sure to get the tickets to them. And then I, th- I think for the the listening audience as well, if they can't get to the uh, the internet, they don't tweet. If they don't, if they are not tweeters, <laughs> um, we have a little trivia question, I believe. Yes. Um, and the number to get in, if you think you know the answer, is two one two two six eight nine two two two. And uh, do you want to do the trivia question, or do I get to? No, you get to. I guess you're in the trivia question. You should be able to. Read. Okie dokie. Um, what number pick was I in the 2006 NFL draft? If you uh, if you think you know the answer to what number pick was I in the NFL draft, um, give us a call, 212-268-9222, and uh, we'll get those tickets to you so you can enjoy a, a fun-filled evening of food, drink, and, and some NFL players. You know what? You're making me nervous because you did that so well. I think after your career is over, you're going to take somebody's job in this room. I just have that feeling. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. That would be mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a better job, better chance of you taking my job than me taking your job. That's for sure. Oh, you're looking pretty good. You've been working out. The, yeah, I have been actually. Thanks fantastic. for noticing. New diet. Yeah, going Nutrisystem. organic. Nutrisystem. Yeah, I I see the commercials for it, and it just it still doesn't look appetizing. No matter yeah. how much they say that those meals and they they. That's why you lose the weight because you you don't want to eat it. <laughs> you just say, you know what, I'll, I'll just watch TV and not eat today. But no, it actually isn't that bad. But I did lose some weight. Yeah. Thanks for oh, noticing. Fantastic. That's amazing. You did a great job, Dave. Thank you so much. Good luck this season. Looking forward to talking to you. Oh, it'd be a blast. Driving up the way up. Uh, how do you think about that? Going up north for a training camp. That should be interesting. Uh, I've never gone away for a training camp. I've always at Ohio State. We were always uh, right there on campus, and then at Hofstra, we were always right there at Hofstra. So. This will be my first time going away, and I'm kind of a little, little scared, and, you know, that nervous, little scared idea that you know I'm going to be out on my own and and won't know what to do. You know what? You'll be fine. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm getting out of my comfort zone here. Well, you know what? If you get bored ever, you give us a call. We'll put you on the air. 
We'll tweet. We'll tweet. <laughs> we can do that. We don't have to be on the air to tweet. We can just tweet whenever. <laughs> Nick, good luck this season. Thanks for giving us a couple of minutes. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Don LaGreca here on the Michael K Show. That's Nick Mangold. Coming up next, Steve Phillips, SP40. Don LaGreca on the Michael K Show until 7 right here on 1050 SPN New York. It's Mike and Mike in the morning.